What's the use case? For whom is this a better mousetrap? Why do we need it? Well, if you think about how capital markets work, you have you know, a number of financial assets, right? You have stocks, you have bonds, you have funds, et cetera. And, and the basic functioning is you have to move them, right? You have to give them to an investor, they have to sell them, trade them, redeem them, et cetera. And all those changes of ownership, they're recorded in some sort of ledger, right? And at the same time, you have to move the, the security, but you have to move the cash as well for settling the transaction. And those are things that move in a separate ledger. So blockchain, if you think about it, is just basically like this very, very good public, uh, you know, cryptographically secure distributed ledger that allows you to represent securities alongside with cash and move them in a very, very efficient way. And that unlocks a lot of utility for, for securities and a lot of accessibility, instant settlement, eliminates reconciliation problems, uh, manual processes, et cetera. So that's what tokenization is essentially. And Carlos, who do you see this as being for? Of course, you've raised, I believe, $280 million since the debut. So clearly it's for someone. But do you see it as more for the crypto audience, people who are invested in crypto? Or do you think that uh, is more for traditional finance coming into crypto? This particular product uh, with BlackRock is geared towards the, the crypto institutions that want to have uh, um, you know, a cash management product uh, native on chain. Uh, tokenize uh, for either treasury management or for building derivative products or collateral management, et cetera. So this particular product is really for the, the crypto institutions to, to have a better management of, of cash, obviously managed by the, the largest asset manager in, in the world and completely on chain. We have done projects with other firms like KKR Hamilton Lane, where you know the, the, the goal there is actually to try to democratize access to those financial services products by using tokenization as a means of digitization if you want to provide broader ownership and easier distribution, trading, et cetera. So, so Carlos, as I understand it, you get a token that is associated with some underlying assets, almost like an ETF. And those underlying That's assets right. will, we hope, over time, be gaining in value. Uh, when you make money off of the underlying asset, how do you redeem that incremental uh, addition? Do you get cash? Do you get more tokens? How does it work? So the, the, the tokenized uh, fund with BlackRock is essentially a money market fund. It has you know, short-term treasuries and, and repurchase uh, re agreements. And then the, you get a token at the beginning when you purchase a unit on the fund. The token is valued at $1. And then as you accrue interest, we basically will send you to your wallet, which is essentially your, your address on the blockchain that contains your assets. We will send you more tokens, so you increment the number of tokens that you have there. Um, and then eventually you can redeem back into cash if you wanted to then, you know, exit the fund and, and get cash. And I want to talk a little bit about the blockchain. So my understanding is this is on the Ethereum blockchain. Why that blockchain versus the Bitcoin blockchain, which is maybe more well known? Well, the, the Bitcoin blockchain is really not useful for for the purpose of the products that we do. You know, one of the key functionalities that we use is the, the fact that you can issue new tokens and then use something called smart contracts, which are basically a set of rules uh, on the blockchain that control how things move around. Um, and that's really not something that we can develop in, uh, in Bitcoin. That was kind of like the main, if you want innovation that the Ethereum blockchain uh, brought into the markets, into the, the crypto markets. And this is why most of the products are built on, on Ethereum and not on, on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is more of like a, a store of value uh, asset and not really a blockchain where you can build uh, other products on top of it. Well, appreciate that context there. And I actually want to zoom out on this blockchain conversation because, of course, this is a public blockchain that we're talking about. And we've seen JP Morgan go the route of a private blockchain, for example. What was the decision process in terms of picking public versus private? Well, so banks are subject to different regulations than, let's say, asset managers or us. Uh, we, we're a registered transfer agent with the SEC and a, and a broker dealer. We are subject to SEC uh, regulations. Banks are subject to OCC regulations. And uh, currently in the US, uh, the OCC is, uh, is recommending banks not to use public blockchains. Um, as kind of like underlying financial service infrastructure, we don't have the same kind of restrictions. and. I do believe that public blockchains is where the, the innovation will happen because of you know, the, the compositability of being able to do things on top of it, uh, et cetera. If you want to understand the differences, it's similar to when internet started and you have you know, American Online and MSN that were close, and then you have the public internet, and the public internet is where the innovation happened, right? Because anybody could actually build things on top of what somebody else was building, right? So long-term, I think that public blockchains is where the 
the future is and where innovation will happen. And unfortunately, banks have restrictions and they're still trying to be innovative like JP Morgan with Onyx, but subject to what the regulators allow them to do. Well, let's talk about the regulators. I'm curious about how regulation might affect your new fund with BlackRock specifically. If you're on Ethereum, if you're using Ether, there are reports that the SEC is looking into that question, whether it might actually be a security. If, in fact, the SEC concluded it was a security, there would be more restrictions on transfer. Does that affect Biddle? It doesn't necessarily affect, I mean, we need to purchase ETH uh, because we need to, you know, basically use ETH to run transactions on the blockchain. That's how a blockchain, the incentive model of a blockchain works, that you have this token that allows you to run transactions and that people stake it to run the nodes. And that's how what provides the security for the blockchain. You know, whether ETH is or not as a security, that's not for me to, to discuss. If it ends up being a security, I guess people will figure out legal ways of purchasing and selling it because today in capital markets there is like 40 trillion or whatever of securities traded daily and that's not really a problem, right? 